This is Seth David for the Sleeter Group, bringing to you a special presentation presented by Doug Sleeter, founder and president. Today we're talking about zero dollar check job costing. Call us for more information about memberships and resources at 888-484-5484. Hi, Doug Sleeter here. I hope you have a copy of the Sleeter Group's Consultants QuickBooks Consultants Reference Guide. And if you don't, uh, this is available in our web store at sleeter.com. There's sleeterstore.com. You can get it. Uh, there's a chapter in here that I wrote a blog post about as well. And uh, we've uh, attached to the blog post this little video uh, example of one of the best tricks we know uh, in QuickBooks for a scenario whereby you have to, um, you, you have an outside payroll service. So you got an outside payroll service and you also need to do job costing. So uh, with this method, you can actually turn off QuickBooks payroll completely. You don't need to have any, any of the costs of, of, of adding the QuickBooks payroll service keys and all that into your QuickBooks. Um, but we're going to use QuickBooks in, in a very creative way to do that. So let me just quickly get into this. So over here on the um, on my uh, screen, you can see I've got uh, a setup, a couple setup steps that I'm going to do. Um, the first uh, thing I'll show you is let's just look at the chart of accounts. I've got a checking account, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a payroll service clearing bank account. This is just an account that's a clearing account. We're going to use this to write some zero dollar checks in in just a minute. The other clearing account I want to add is the, it's something I call payroll job costs. It's an expense account, so you typically don't think of an, a, a clearing account in expenses, but I'm doing that to accomplish my goal of giving you, at the end of this process, a P&L by job, including the cost of your payroll uh, that you've uh, allocated to each of the jobs. So here we go. That, you set up these two uh, accounts to begin with. Then you want to go into your item list. And uh, let me go to the item list here. And I got, um, I, I want to create a service item, actually a two-sided service item. This is a, an item I call design, and it's a two-sided service item. So if you're not familiar with that, it's just this little check mark here that turns it into a two-sided item, which allows me to uh, identify the account that it should hit when the item is used in a debit side of a transaction. Uh, so that's typically when it's getting an expense, it will debit this account called payroll job costs. Now the rate here, $18, is something I'm, I'm putting in there uh, as the fully burdened rate of the payroll for each employee. So I might have several of these service items for each different employee and, or, or at least each different pay rate. And I'm going to take their wages and I'm going to burden it with their benefits and payroll taxes and all of the burden costs you want to put in there. And remember, this is just for the purpose of getting a job cost for the, all of these uh, wages we're going to put in. So it's an estimate, but it's going to be a very close estimate uh, for your job cost reports. It turns out that the right side of this item doesn't even matter because we're actually, well, we might be selling this item on, uh, on uh, uh, invoices and sales receipts. But uh, for my purposes here, it's only the left side of this item that, that really matters. Okay, so let me get out of this. Uh, I've got the items set up. I might have several of these. I got the accounts set up, the clearing accounts. Uh, and then the, I'm going to do what you uh, would normally do with a, um, with a uh, uh, payroll service after you've done with your payroll for January. You're going to get a payroll service report. Um, and that report is going to be uh, put into QuickBooks just like you probably already do, uh, do with a journal entry. So the payroll service is going to have a report. It's going to give you your total gross payroll. Uh, so here are your gross wages. Uh, we're going to debit for that. We're going to uh, office compensation, payroll tax expense. So these are the totals that actually are going to hit your real P&L that really tie into your actual net pay clearing and net pay accounts. So this is straight from their records. Okay. So at the end of doing this journal entry, my profit and loss for this, notice that journal entry was for 131 for January. So my January P&L shows uh, the payroll expenses uh, recorded by that uh, journal entry. Now keep in mind, 
We haven't done any job costing yet. We've just simply done what you would normally do with a payroll service. Now, to get the job costing done, we're going to use the two things we set up, the items and the uh, accounts, to do uh, uh, timesheets that will record uh, each of the people that you, each of your employees, and by the way, these could be either employee names or other names. They don't have to be employees. I would set each employee up as an other name. And the reason that you might need to do that is because if you have payroll turned off in QuickBooks, you can't even create an employee uh, record in the employee list. So just create your employees as other names in QuickBooks and then give them timesheets. And here's a timesheet for Mike uh, Mizuki here. And uh, he's got all of these jobs uh, for this week and this many hours and this class and this, you know, all the notes, just like you would normally do. It might be billable or not, doesn't really matter for our purposes here. Uh, uh, so whatever you set those to, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to um, save this timesheet. Now what I'm going to do is uh, go to the uh, uh, you know, e e at payday, so like that January 31st might have been the monthly payroll. I only did one week of the, pay, uh, of the timesheets. But the next thing I'm going to do is use a, uh, a feature in QuickBooks that we maybe have been using but uh, didn't realize it could be so useful for this. It's a uh, check, uh, and it's going to be a $0 check. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a check on the payroll service clearing account. This is going to be that zero check I talked about. And I'm going to write a check on the 131.11 is the date for that thing. And it's going to be to that Mizuki guy. Now, as soon as I bring up Mike Mizuki's name, uh, QuickBooks uh, looked in the timesheets and it says, hey, Mike has some time that have, has been recorded for this period. Do you want to include his time on this check? It thinks you're actually paying him for this time that he's put in. Of course we're not, but we're using that feature. I'll say yes, and what date range of timesheets should I bring in? I'll say 1-1 one, one to 1-1-2011, one, uh, one, one, uh, 2011, I think. Uh, to 131.11. So I'm going to get all of the timesheets for that month. And remember, I only got one in there so far, but gives you an idea what's going on. What did it do? It just filled out this uh, check on the items tab with all of the item types, labor design, labor design. So one of my other items over there was uh, labor, which was also a two-sided item, hitting that payroll job costs. So all of these items are debiting payroll job costs expense by job, and that's the key piece, by job and class, by the way. So because these debits are hitting the jobs, all of this is going to feed my P&L by job report, which is the, the thing we're after. But of course, we don't really want to write him a check, so we're going to go over here, and we're going to go to payroll job costs, and we're going to say minus 810. Oops. Minus 810, minus 810, and uh, then that zeroes out this check. It keeps the debits hitting the uh, accounts with the job codes, and it creates a, an expense to with no job code to zero out that clearing account. I'll say save and new there, and now let's look at the P&L by job. My P&L by job shows the payroll job costs for each of these jobs showing up as a, a burden. So the net income per job is now uh, split across. But of course, I, I didn't really change anything with my normal P&L. So my P&L for the month didn't change. It's still got those same expenses. Now it has this payroll job cost, which is just zero. It's, and I could eliminate that by customizing the report. and. Uh, say um, advanced and show all non-zero rows and then watch that'll actually go away so it's almost like it never existed so it was a way for us to use the, the power of quickbooks and timesheets and items and clearing accounts to get you a payroll or a p l by job including job costing of your payroll uh, uh, wages so i hope you like that and uh, we'll be coming back to you with some more information and more articles just like this via video and the blog real soon.